Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling Applied Multivariate Analysis. And we're in Chapter 4 part of this playlist, which I'm calling the Multivariate Normal Distribution. And let's jump in today's topics, which are properties of the Multivariate Normal Random Variables. And we're going to look at the first section here, which is Distribution of Linear Combinations of Y. So if Y is a Multivariate Normal Random Variable, P components, P variables, mean vector mu, variance, covariance matrix sigma, then linear combinations of Y's then is multivariate normal. That is that if we take A transpose Y, which is this linear combination of the Y's, it's, more, it's normal distributed with mean a transpose mu a transpose sigma a as the variance now in normal random variables we need these to be scalars numbers so how can these vector products be a number well, let's look at that so a transpose is one by p the mean vector mu is p by one so this product is one by one the variance matrix a transpose is one by p Sigma is P by P, A is P by 1, so the outer numbers is 1 by 1, so it's a scalar. So it is, they do create scalars. Now to show that the means and variances are what they should be, let's take the expected value of A transpose Y. A is constant, so it comes out of the expectation. The expected value of the vector Y is the mean vector, and that's what we said it was. The variance of A transpose Y. Now ultimately I'm going to stop writing these additional steps and go from this first expression to the last, but I'm kind of giving you how, how my mind works a little bit. Since these are vectors, that's the same as the covariance of A transpose Y, but co, co means two, so I put two of them here. And then since the vector or matrix is in the front, then this property holds, where you bring out the A to the front, and you take its transpose out back. And then the covariance of Y is sigma. And so this is the variance covariance matrix that we said it should be. Now the joint distribution of Q linear combinations of Y is multivariate normal. So if we take a matrix A times Y, now A is Q by P, Y is P by 1, so the result is a Q by 1 vector, which we're saying is multivariate normal. <clears throat> um, so A can be thought of as this matrix. So these are row vectors. Remember, this is Q by P times Y, which then the Y goes into each of those, this. It's, it's a, oh, look at that. That should be Q. It's multivariate normal, Q variables, not P, the mean A times mu, the variance is A sigma A transpose. And to see that, you take the expected value of AY, our linear transform, uh, transformation. A is constant, comes out front. The expected value of Y is the mean vector. So that is what it says. The variance of AY, remember that A comes out from, remember that the vector or the matrix is in front of our random variable. So A comes out front and it's transposed out back and then that's what we said it should be. Now as an R illustration, we need to load the library mass and, and you don't need to download the package mass because mass comes with every installation of R. So we want our sample size to be 1000. Now remember well, let me go back. These, what we covered just a second ago, were theoretical derivations. And now we're going to apply it to a sample. So the sample transformation should be very close to the theoretical. And the, the larger we increase our sample size, actually the closer they are. So we want a mean vector of 10, 5, 7, 9, and 20. We have a variance covariance matrix of, of this. I'm not going to say it. Five columns, right, because five random variables. Uh, we, this is it. The multivariate R norm is how you create a sample of multivariate data. So N is the sample size, mu is the mean vector, and sigma is the covariance matrix. We store it in Y. 
And then let's, in previous videos, I used what's called the head function, head of Y, and it creates the, you know, prints the first six observations. Tail prints the last six observations. <clears throat> so here they are. The transformation we're going to look at is, is A, this vector 1, 0, minus 1, 0, 0. So this is actually a comparison between the first and third components. Um, the mean this is uh, A transpose mu. Now remember, since this is matrix multiplication, it tries to keep it in a matrix format. And since it's a one by one matrix, I want to force it to a number. So that's what the as numeric out front is. And, and it should create some uh, mu1 is 3. Then we, to do the uh, variance, uh, A transpose times sigma times A. And then I force it to be a number as opposed to that matrix format. So sig1. Now the transformation, A transpose Y. Now the way... R stores data in a, in a data frame, or, you know, it's the columns are the variables. But these transformations require the columns to be observations. So I just take the transpose. Now, each row is a variable, and each column is an observation. And so we create Z, so this is the transform. Then I create a histogram of Z to see if it's, you know, bell-shaped or multivariate normal. And then I plot the theoretical curve above it, and I have some legends. So let's see what we get here. So there's a histogram with the theoretical curve plotted on top of it, the red line. And so they are so close. So the sample, of the, or the empirical results, the sample results, agree with the theoretical results. You know, the mean is 2.9, which is pretty close. Variance is 4.1, which is pretty close. And the larger the sample size we create, of course, these sample results will approach the theoretical results. Now, let's look at standardized multivariate normal. Standardized means mean zero, variance is one, covariance is zero. So if y is a, is a normal distribution, so that's a... Uh, one value, one variable, mean mu variance sigma squared, then this transformation, y minus mu divided by the standard deviation, creates what we call a z score, z variable, but it's a standard normal, which is mean zero variance one. Now, to show that it is that, we take the expected value z, we put in what z is, the constant comes out front, expectation goes in, the expected value of y minus mu is zero, right? Mu minus mu. Now, the variance of z is the variance of this transformation. The constant comes out front squared. Uh, constants don't play a part of variance, so we, we get rid of it. The variance of y is sigma squared. Oh, you know, you know, then times one over sigma squared is one. So it is true. The, at least the theoretical aspects of it. Now, analog analogously, if y is a multivariate normal distribution, p variables, mean vector mu, uh, covariance matrix sigma, then this transformation produces a multivariate normal, uh, a, yeah, standard multivariate normal distribution. Mean zeros, variance is one, all the covariances are zero. Now, this is the same transformation we used in Mahalanobis distance, and we showed that it is indeed, uh, you know, it does standardize the variables. Now, as a reminder that, you know, sigma to the one-half, we call the square root matrix, and to show that it, this transformation does work, expected value of z is this, constant comes out front, expectation goes in to the y, expected value of y is the mean vector, mu minus mu is zero. Now the variance is this, so the and so the variance is in front of this random variable, so it comes out front and then out back transpose. But the cover, the square root matrix is symmetric, so we don't need a transpose. The variance of y is sigma, and then this reduces the i. Now a note that we could use. There's so many 
different transformations that you can use to to standardize a multivariate normal. And another one is Cholesky's decom. So z sigma can be thought of as T transpose T, and that could be replaced by the square root matrix. So you take this transformation, T transpose inverse Y minus mu. That's also a standard normal. Now let's look at a quick illustration and call our quits for today. We're going to use the, the library mass again. We're going to, uh, and so we have this variance covariance matrix sigma, and we're going to create a square root matrix from it, from this, um, this command. And to show that it is a square root matrix, we take it times itself and notice that we get the, the variance covariance matrix back. So it is a square root matrix. Now we take the inverse of it because we need it in our transformation. We generate multivariate normal sample. We take uh, the inverse square root matrix times this y minus mu, which is the sweep function. We look at the row means and they're really close to zero, right? So each variable has a mean roughly zero. The covariance matrix is is this now it's roughly ones down the diagonal and values pretty close to zero in the off diagonal so it does seem like this transformation worked we could have used Cholesky's decomp and we, so we take the Cholesky decomp of the very the covariance matrix call it t and then we take the inverse of t the transpose of t times this y minus mu which we did with sweep Look at the row means, and they're pretty close to zero. The covariance, you know, rounded to two decimals. And then the covariance of this transformation is pretty close to ones down the diagonal and zeros and off diagonal. Now, this is a sample of a thousand. And so it, to me, agrees with the theoretical results. But if we increase the sample size, then these become more and more close to what the theoretical results is. So let's create a sample size of 1 million and do the transformation using the inverse square root matrix. And we look at the means, at least rounded to two decimals, it's exactly zero. And then the covariance matrix of Z, our transformation, at least rounded to two decimals, is exactly the identity matrix. So it's really close to the theoretical results. All right, well, that's all I have for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.